Hey everyone, I wanted to put together a video to describe how I've been using uh, the Internet Archive and a WordPress site to set up a podcast. I'm going to be focusing on audio podcasts. Sometimes people get confused about what is a podcast or we call everything a podcast. Um, so this YouTube video that you're watching, um, some people might say that this is a podcast. Um, I would not refer to that as a podcast. For me, podcast is usually audio or video, but most times just audio content. And the nice thing is that I can download, download this to my device and listen to it at a later date. So I can listen to it while I'm going for a run or exercising or driving in the car. But a podcast is, to me, a little bit more transferable, a little bit more portable. So I've been uh, so if I were to take this YouTube video and just strip out the audio content and share that, that might be a podcast for me. But I guess we're just arguing semantics. So I've been using Internet Archive as a free way to host my audio content. I've used other services in the past, um, but I like what I have here. So one of the first things to note is that you're going to want to go into the Internet Archive, and I have a earlier video on this, but I shared uh, I, I modified this a little bit so I'm gonna go into the Internet Archive um, I'm going to create an account I'm already signed in so I can basically look at my materials um, so if I go into my library I can see all of the content that I've uploaded over the past it's taken a minute what I can also do while this is loading is um, I can just go straight to the upload section and you know upload my audio files. Once again, I have an audio. I have a previous video on this. It's important to keep the file names of the audio files uh, pretty simple. Um, so, may for my podcast, it's Techno Panic Podcast or Techno Panic Episode One. No spaces or anything in between. No hyphens. Um, what will happen is when you upload it, it will modify those file names and really mess you up. So my advice is to get started and identify four, five, six uh, files that you're ready to start with. So, uh, you know, have a bunch of episodes ready to go of content. You can see I have our first four episodes already uploaded um, into one page on the Internet Explorer. So I have our details .technopanic, uh, podcast. I have all of this information that I have a previous video explaining how to get it there. But the nice thing is that they're all on this page, they're all uploaded. Um, and then what I can do is I can go to show all. And on the show all page, what I'm going to be looking for soon uh, in this video, what I'm going to look for is this .mp3. So you can see I have technopanic1.mp3 and I can grab that and say copy the link address. And then if I go to a new page and paste it, it will have that wrapper for uh, that individual file. So once again, here's our Technopanic 1, MP3, 2, MP3. And the biggest mistake that I had previously, the hurdle was uh, having spaces and trying to be uh, too creative with my titles. Keep it super simple. Um, so the next thing you're going to want to do is once you have all of that uploaded to the Internet Archive, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, go to a uh, website that you've created. So I uh, have a WordPress site. This is a hosted WordPress site. Um, you can do this also with free sites. You can do this with other blogging platforms. This is WordPress uh, that I host. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is add the uh, this plugin the Blueberry uh, PowerPress podcasting plugin. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go over to plugins and I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to search for Blueberry PowerPress. Uh, you can see that I already have it installed. So once I have this installed, it's going to give us these settings down here. So I'm going to go to PowerPress. Uh, I'm already on the simple mode. Uh, if this is in the advanced mode, you're going to want to switch over. Uh, this is guidance that I picked up on an earlier YouTube video that's out there. Um, but basically, you're going to go into simple mode. You're going to add a title for this. Um, this goes right over to iTunes and then whatever podcast catcher you have. So add in your title. 
add in your subtitle, your summary. Um, so here is basically the title of our podcast, and this is a subtitle. Um, one of the things to keep in mind here is that I use this topic of screen time multiple times. That's good. Um, and if you have a specific audience, you want to mention it multiple times. So when people search for it, they will find it. Add in your category. iTunes will require this. Add in your uh, level of explicit content. iTunes will require that. Add in that email address that you're going to use for your podcast. Um, how often you're going to post. You're also going to want to use uh, upload uh, cover art for your uh, podcast. One of the tools that I definitely recommend using is Canva. So I created our cover art in Canva. Um, I do a lot of different pieces in Canva, but you can see I uh, bought this background and I created this, agreed on it with my colleague, and we uploaded that. So you're going to want to upload that. Um, you're going to want to enlarge it when it kicks it out of Canva. It's going to be 800 by 800 pixels. You're going to want to enlarge that um, and then host it somewhere. What I did is you can see I hosted it, I uploaded it to this WordPress site, and then grabbed the uh, URL to share here. So make sure that you upload that. Um, down here you can have other, other modifications to this. I pretty much left it all alone. Once you set that up and you have all that running, you're going to go to the advanced mode. And this is where you'll add a lot of the same content that you just added in the simple mode. It's a little bit confusing, but I think it's just trying to specify for other podcasting agents. So what I do is I frequently will open this tab on one screen and open it on another screen, have it on simple mode on one screen and advanced mode on this one. Um, but if I look through this first page, you're not really changing anything. Under episodes, I didn't change anything in this field either. I pretty much left everything as it was. When I go to services and stats, I didn't change anything here either. Under website, I left it as uh, it left all of these as they are. So I have the media players and links. I liked having the uh, you know the uh, media file viewable on the page, and it pretty much left everything the way that it is here. Okay, um, but then once I get into feeds. The next couple tabs is where it gets very important because in your feeds, it's going to talk about um, modifying our feed. So then I can set up uh, this is the feed for my podcast. This will be very important. Um, you're going to want to be able to share that with other tools. You're going to be able to validate the feed to make sure that it works. Um, so you want to make sure that and this is stuff that after you upload a couple episodes, you want to test. But one of the things you want to make sure is. The feed is basically the pipeline it is one link or one URL that keeps all of your um, episodes hosted on it. So you want to make sure that it's working um, and doing what it should do or else iTunes and other spaces are going to kick you out. So uh, once again, down here in the feed settings, what is my title again from the simple area feed description again from the simple area. Um, I pretty much left all of this stuff alone. Um, I didn't include a show location or anything else. And then what is the uh, rental uh, parental rating on this thing? If I go to Apple, this is the uh, content that Apple and iTunes is going to review when they approve or um, review your podcast. Um, this is also something that's going to show up in iTunes at a later date. So basically, this is all the same stuff that I copy pasted over from the earlier parts uh, in the simple mode. Um, I have the category again, the explicit rating, our author names, email addresses, um, all of the same stuff that we saw before. I could change this. I decided to leave it alone. Once I get my feed running, I want to leave it alone. In Google, this is for Google Play. We uploaded our podcast to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, um, Pocket Cast, uh, and a couple other places. We wanted pretty much... Uh, my mindset is you want to make the podcast available to whatever client or podcatcher someone's using. So a lot of this stuff is basically the same information, but Google Play now has access to it and you're sharing it out there. Um, under artwork, this is the same content that I shared before. So this is the link to the cover art for the uh, podcast. 
Um, I left all this alone. Google, I used the same link there as well. Um, so basically, it's a lot of the same information that you're uh, copy pasting multiple times and just sending it out. This plugin is sending it out to the different channels. One of the things that might be helpful is to have a Google Doc or a Google Keep Note set up where you have all of this information ready for you to just copy paste over. Um, destinations, I didn't change anything here. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. After our, we were approved by Apple, by iTunes, I put the link there. Um, when we were approved by Google Play, I put the link there. Um, and then this is also helpful. Uh, you know, you can click the link and it will send you right to the page to go uh, submit your podcast. Um, so this whole this whole page basically uh, walked us through the process of where do we uh, submit the feed to to get it uh, reviewed and then validated. So pretty much every single space here approved our podcast. Um, uh, tune in rejected us. Um, I think Stitcher we were approved, but I just have to add that in. But we're definitely on Spotify and Google Play um, and Apple. So once you have all of that up and running, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to upload your content and create that feed. Um, so you have the feed, you have that stream that's coming out of your website, but you want to make sure that you have uh, the episodes built in there. So if I go to posts, I'll show you some of the posts that I have uploaded um, and give you an idea of what this looks like. So in our most recent post that is live, we have a couple others that are in editing and review and a couple others waiting to get posted online. Um, what I have here is a title. You can see the permalink for it is our Technopanic slash four, uh, or hyphen four. Uh, we modified this to basically just have the episode number and the title. Uh, this was after reviewing what other podcasters were doing. Uh, we try to keep it simple. So when we have a podcast, we'll have a Google Doc where we'll share uh, you know, our news and notes for each episode and clean it up as soon as we're done recording. And that Google Doc has all of the notes um, and links for all of our episodes. And then when I post this online, I go back and copy paste that content over here. So these are just notes from uh, the, the recording session. Um, over here, I created a category for podcast. It's a little bit overkill, but I just felt like I wanted to make sure the feed was up and running. And if someone wanted to go through the website and look at just the podcast episodes, they could. Um, I also had a lot of tagging. And then here I have the cover art uploaded as well. Uh, once again, to share it in your feed settings, you have to upload it somewhere. So I uploaded it to the site. So I'm using it for the featured image of the post and also for the feed. Um, I previously had this set up so up here in the post I would have the image um, and I thought it looked a little bit too weird, especially for my theme. So I basically just made it the uh, featured image. I don't think it really matters where you put it. Um, and so the, the next thing you're going to want to do is I'm going to go down here and say modify existing podcast episode. But one of the really nice things about that Blueberry uh, plugin, the podcasting plugin, is it will add this uh, dialogue down in the bottom of your post. So the key here is you're going to want to put in the URL. Pretty much the only thing you need to do is grab the URL for the episode. So what you'll do is you'll go over to um, the Internet Archive. Um, I have I'm going to put all my episodes on one page to make it easier for people to find. But if you have individual ones, you could either go to uh, control click or right click on this and grab that link address because I have multiple files here. Once again, I'm going to go to show all. I'm going to uh, episode four. So ep episode four, uh, the MP3. What this is doing is when you upload the audio, it's going to automatically convert it to other formats. Um, that's incredible for people that are on Internet Archive, but if it's just a podcast feed, it's a little bit more annoying. Um, so I'm going to basically control click or right click on that, grab that link address, and then go back to the post. Um, when you first start this up, this will be blank. So this will be blank. You're going to have to paste it in there, um, and then you basically verify the URL. 
what it's doing is it's basically talking to the Internet Archive. It's looking for this link to make sure that the media is there and it loads correctly. And then once you get this, you're golden. The challenge is getting to that has always been a pain for me. Um, and then everything else here, I basically leave alone. This is auto detecting the size, the length and everything else. I didn't touch any of that. All I did is paste in the URL and verify the URL to make sure that it's working correctly. Once you get to that green, you're absolutely perfect. The mistakes that I made in the past, um, basically, let me see if I can replicate some of that. So if I go in and I grab a different one, um, what was ha what was basically happening is some of these to have the space. What would happen is the uh, in between the copy pasting the somewhere the browser would basically inject other characters. It would inject like um, a percent twenty sign, a percent two o, and into the URL, and that would really mess it up. And so to eliminate that, I basically I advise you not to have spaces and keep it super simple. So have your 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 podcast name, episode number, and MP3, and then when you grab that URL, you can paste it in here, and you can see that it basically has the same name. If there were a space in this, it would have something crazy like uh, percent twenty in there, um, and you'd have to go through and delete all of those. And many times it just doesn't work. Um, and so while we're here, just because it was a huge pain for me. If you upload things and you need to clean it up, the way that you do that is you go into, let me see if I can go in and edit this. So if I go in and I uh, go to edit, I can change the files. And then here, what I would do is I would go in and I did this before the video, go into rename and basically eliminate all the dots, dashes, everything else, um, and then let it sync or basically uh, change those file names in the Internet Archive. So once you have that ready to go, I have the title, I have the episode information, uh, the media content is there, it's all verified. I'm going to go back to the post. I'm not going to save this because I don't want to mess anything up for my feed right now. I spent too much time figuring it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at the post. So the public side of all this, I have the main uh, website. This is my featured image. Um, the dates are very important. So when we realized what uh, cadence we wanted to have to launch our podcast series, we basically agreed that we wanted it to be um, every two weeks and release on Wednesdays. So I basically grabbed a calendar and I checked off the four episodes that I have, went back every two weeks, um, so went back about two months and just dated those because what's going to happen is when this gets pulled into iTunes and elsewhere, it's going to look at the title. It's going to look at the date and stagger your episodes based upon the date. And then it's going to pull your audio feed. Um, and so if you need to modify the release schedule, you're modifying this date, first of all. Um, and so, yes, uh, things that come before this, even though it might be listed as a different episode number, iTunes and other places are not going to care. They're going to look at your date. Um, so here's the external uh, or the, the, the public side of the post. Uh, people that listen to the podcast might never uh, come here to uh, look at this content, and that's fine. Um, but there might be people that read the website, and now they want to go over and listen to the podcast um, and they don't have to sit in front of their computer. So episode title, the date, the category is in podcast like we talked about before. Um, I also have the category over here, the tags that you already saw. Here is all the information and the links from our discussion. This is the player for the MP3 file. So this is the Blueberry uh, PowerPress player that adds us in. So the nice thing is that someone could sit here and just listen to the podcast right from the browser. Um, they can play this in a new window. So what I'll do is grab uh, the same sort of look that we had from the Internet Archive. They can download these files if they want to. We Creative Commons license our podcasts. Um, our podcast so people can download it and remix it then they can subscribe so they can go to Apple Podcasts, Android stuff like that 
This stuff here is also because of Blueberry PowerPress, that plugin. So this content here, um, it's basically taking the information that I added in the settings and making these links here. So the nice thing is someone could just happen to come across this and say, you know what, I really would love to listen to this on uh, iTunes and then click and go right over here to iTunes and uh, listen on their device or their iPad or wherever they might uh, find it the easiest to use. Um, so one other quick thing to note here. Um, so if I click on the category of podcast, what I'll do is I'll have a link. I'll have a list of all of the episodes that have that same category. So basically, this is a way to keep track of all episodes. But what I also created, so you can see we have our URL, uh, the category is podcast, but then I also created a page. Once again, this is a little bit of redundancy, but I figure it's easier if we want people to be able to easily access the content. So we made a page um, for the podcast. So the page basically talks about what is this? Um, where, how to subscribe. Um, then I say you can also review all episodes here, and that is a link to the category for podcasts that I just showed you. I also indicate that episodes are also available on the Internet Archive, and I give the link right to this page. So the fact that I have all episodes on one page is also helpful um, because I'm connecting the dots over here on the website. And then at the bottom, I include the cover art. I did not include the cover art as the featured image for the page. I decided to leave it on this page here. So if I go into our main website, here's the front of the whole site, and then my navigation. On the na navigation, I have a page for podcast. And so this is where uh, when we share uh, the podcast, when we try to explain the podcast to other people, I'll share this link. And this link basically is the key to get everywhere. If they want to look at other episodes, individual episodes, they can go there. Or they can go to the podcaster of their choice and grab whatever content that they want. So once again, we're talking about uh, hosting your own podcast. I think it's a, a valuable way to share content. Uh, one of the reasons why I value having a podcast, especially an audio podcast, is I want to make my content accessible to all. I don't want it to be something that people have to sit in front of a YouTube channel or a TV or a computer to watch my content and listen. So what I'll do is I'll put it out as audio and then put it on your device and go for a walk or listen while you're driving. I think you're making your content a little bit more accessible, a little bit more approachable. Um, and also MP3 file sizes are a lot smaller. Um, so what we did was we basically uploaded these files. Uh, once we created the podcast, upload them to the internet archive. We get those uh, links for the URL, uh, the URL for the MP3 share. So I'm saying copy link address. We're bringing it over to a WordPress site and we're using the Blueberry podcasting plugin for WordPress and then setting up all of the features in the settings page for PowerPress and then uploading those uh, MP3 files and making sure that it all works. So hopefully this video was of value to you. Um, this is the video that I wish that I found while I was trying to figure it out. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or things aren't clear, please leave me a comment and I can hopefully answer it in an upcoming video. And thanks again.